Okay, now we are finally at that point of talking about behavioral-based interviews. And we're gonna dig into this fairly deeply. So what are they? The idea here in this concept is that people's behavior is consistent over time. Past behavior is the best predictor of future behavior. People do change, but the reality is we don't change very fast, we don't change very often. However, I acted yesterday, last week, last month, last year, is probably pretty much the way I'm gonna act in the future. You know, we try to change. I mean, we just got through the new year and a number of us have come up with things that we want to do new for the new year, but a lot of times those things don't stick very well. It's just tough for humans to change, that we do. There's no question that we do. But when we look at candidates, however they performed and behaved in previous situations is probably a fairly good indication of how they will perform for you in a new job. So the question is, is how do we figure out what that behavior actually was? How do we measure that behavior? And that's what we're going to dig into here. So it's an approach that looks at past behavior as the best predictor of future performance. And quite frankly, that's about the only thing we really do have in terms of predicting the future. In fact, there was a study that said with traditional interviews, and we're gonna get into those traditional or hypothetical questions here in a little bit, that could predict the job behavior 10% of the time. That's a pretty bad batting average. But with behavioral interviewing, we could increase that what, 550% to 55% of the time. But look at that though, it's still only slightly better than 50-50. You know, we do need to recognize that selection process, interviewing is a, a subjective process, but we can improve our hit rate considerably by using by a behavioral based interviewing. Okay, here's what we're doing. So we're gonna create these interview questions based on these competencies we've talked about. The uh, competencies, the skill, the ability, the behavioral standards, things that are important where we can determine whether somebody is going to be a good fit for our organization or not. So then from that, we're gonna predict future performance based on these different behaviors. Clearly, we need to look at behaviors and standards that are job related and realistic. And you know, we all have, have probably our favorite uh, interview questions. I knew someone once, their favorite interview question was, what is your favorite comic strip? Well, that is an interesting question. And maybe if you're a psychologist, that would be meaningful. Uh, but quite frankly, it's kind of hard to tell that that's job re related and realistic. It is kind of fun, uh, but it probably is pretty confusing to the candidate, and I'm not sure how you use that information anyway. So I think that's something we always want to measure. Do our, do our questions really make good sense, and are they useful? And many times we don't have as much time as we might like to have, and so we need to be careful about using our time wisely and asking good questions. We're, with these behavior-based questions, we are looking at actual past behavior versus hypothetical, and I'll, I'll get into that more. But for example, with actual behavior, I look at what did you actually do? How did you uh, actually behave? How did you actually perform? With hypothetical, with, and that's the traditional uh, interview question, is we ask, what would you do? We might have a scenario, if something happened, how would you handle that? Well, that's asking people to hypothesize, to speculate, to guess. It doesn't tell you necessarily how they actually would have behaved in the past. And in fact, what it does oftentimes is test their knowledge versus their action. And knowledge is a good thing. We, we certainly wanna know if somebody knows something or not. That's important. On the other hand, just because you know something doesn't mean that's what you do. Say for example, I just read a book on teamwork. Maybe I read two or three books. Maybe I teach a class on teamwork. So I know a lot about it and I can tell you different models of teamwork and theories and those kinds of things. Does that mean that I am a good team member or that I can actually lead a team? I think there's a correlation there, 
if I have knowledge, I'm more likely to behave in a way that's consistent with that knowledge, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I do it. There's certainly a lot of people who are pretty well educated as leaders, but that doesn't necessarily make them a good leader. And in fact, I'm thinking back, I, I had a, uh, a gentleman who reported to me, and he was a manager of a department. He was phenomenal. Uh, the guy, I, I was just amazed at how he led people, and he got people to willingly and joyfully do things they never believed they could do. He got more accomplished, high quality, high volume. He was just phenomenal, and it, his people loved him, and they worked hard. Now, if I would have, and if you looked at his education, he had a high school diploma. If you talked to him about his theory of leadership, he would just say, I just treat people right. It's something like that. He, he wasn't an academic guy at all, but he was phenomenal in terms of actual performance. So in terms of knowledge, yeah, I mean, he, I think he intuitively knew what he was doing, uh, but to ask him to articulate that, I don't think he could have done a very good job. But if you look at the actual action, the results and the performance, he was phenomenal. So that's what we're, what we're looking at here is what is the actual action? What, are the peop, what have people done in the past? And then we're going to make this assumption then that how they behave tomorrow is pretty much the way they behaved yesterday. Okay, so with a traditional or hypothetical question, you ask, what would you do? That's not an irrelevant question. It's just ask people to speculate, okay? The other way to answer it, and there's not very much difference, but it is significant, with the behavioral-based questions is tell me about a time. And the difference is you're asking the person to reflect back on actual behavior and give you an example of what they did and how they handled it, as, a, as opposed to asking them to speculate what they would do in that situation. Now, both are relevant questions. It's just that the behavioral-based one is going to be more specific and give you better information and make it easier for you to evaluate 